Hey cloud people. In this video, I want to demo to you how you can map AWS IAM roles to permissions within the security API of OpenSearch, the successor to Elasticsearch. And I'm going to do that demo within the AWS service for OpenSearch. My name is Jan Stoneman. I'm a solution architect with 13 AWS certifications and I work with AWS technologies on a day-to-day -day basis. All right, let's dive right in. Here we are in the AWS management console and I wanna do the whole thing. So I'm not gonna dive straight into the security API of the OpenSearch dashboard. Instead, I'm gonna create the domain, I'm gonna set up the IAM role and uh, have some code ready that will call the security API. And if you want to skip straight to the part where I actually show the mapping, you can use the timestamps in the description below to skip ahead to that point. But for those of you who want the complete picture to see how you can get there yourself, let's dive right in here. So um, in the AWS management console here, uh, you can type in open search to get that to pop up. And then we're going to create domain. We'll call it test and let's use development and testing. Uh, let's use the latest version. By the way, enable compatibility mode is pretty cool. If you're using Elasticsearch clients that need a version like 7.1 instead of OpenSearch 1.1, you can click this and it'll report 7.10. For this experiment, we don't need that, but it's pretty cool. And then for instance type, the T family, by the way, does not support encryption. And if you don't enable encryption, you can't have fine grained access controls. So in order to have all those features enabled, we're gonna not use the T family. And we're not gonna use R6 either because the M family tends to be a little cheaper, tiny bit cheaper than R. Again, I'm only talking about cost here because this is just a test of security features, not trying to get a particular performance. All right, so moving on down, we'll use the minimum storage size and we don't need any dedicated master nodes for this. We just need something. And then let's just do public access um, just to get in here as easily as possible. Like we, we would wanna use uh, IAM ARN here in reality uh, because that's you know more auditable than a username password and more dynamic in many ways but uh for the sake of this let's just start out with the username and password and then create an iam role that maps to more specific permissions than the master user once we're in the open search dashboard by the way for those of you curious about this master user as an iam role i did write an article about that and the gist of it is that this IAM role functions purely for authorization. So you can create a master user IAM role here that has zero policies attached to it. The authentication is all that IAM role is used for. Authorization happens within the OpenSearch API. And since you're telling the OpenSearch API, hey, this IAM role is the master user, the authorization at the open search level is going to say, oh, it's the master user. It can do anything. So that's why you don't need to attach any policies, uh, any IAM policies to this IAM role if you're using that as the master user. But again, we're just going to create like admin, you know, just for testing purposes to get into the dashboard faster. And we don't need SAML here. I'm not going to integrate with any single sign on at this point and not going to use Cognito for this demo. And let's use fine grained access control because I don't want all the requests to, to the domain to be denied. And let's just use the default AWS owned key for encryption and always tag your stuff and creating. This can take 15 minutes or so. While this open search domain is being created, I want to jump into the AWS IAM prerequisites for what we're about to do. So you can map AWS IAM users or roles to permissions within the open search security API, but I want to use AWS IAM roles because that's what your uh, computers are going to use. Um, your EC2 instances, your lambdas uh, to connect to 
the open search API. You could give your Lambda or your EC2 an IAM user, but that's not the best practice. So let's test this out with IAM roles. So let's create an IAM role and I'm going to open up here uh, the IAM dashboard and we're going to go to roles. Let's create role and the trusted entity will be an AWS account. Let's make it this account just to keep things simple. And next, we don't need to give it any permissions. Permissions are handled within OpenSearch itself. Here, this role only functions for authorization purposes. And the role name, uh, let's call it OpenSearch Demo Role. And the trusted entity is this account. And always tag your resources in AWS and create role. Tagging helps your company keep track of costs and can do a lot of other cool things. Okay, now just to show the full picture here, let's create an IEM user uh, that I will use to assume this role. So let's go to users and let's go to add users and this will be open search demo user and let's give it programmatic access and let's attach existing policies directly and let's create a policy first. So I'll open that in a new tab. The only permissions this user will have is to assume a role. Um, pretty sorry user. Uh, okay, so we're gonna do assume role and they're only gonna be allowed to assume a single role, the one we created earlier. Let's grab that role ARN and open search demo role. Okay, and I'm gonna grab the ARN of the open search demo role and paste it in here. Okay, and always tag your resources in AWS, um, except for this demo. Um, and then this will be open search demo policy create policy and let's refresh the list of policies here and search for open search demo policy attach it we could be tagging this but, and then create user and let's copy this access key and secret access key and i'll just paste that access key into text edit for now pardon the vita mix in the background and now we're gonna open up our credentials file in Visual Studio Code or wherever you want. And in Visual Studio Code, you can just add the credentials like this, access key ID, AWS secret access key ID, and the region that you're using. And let's also paste the role ARN that we're gonna be assuming here uh, so that we can use it when we're assuming the role. So let's see how to do an STS assume role command here. Okay, so we need the role ARN and a role session name. I'm gonna copy that onto my text edit as well for reference. And let's quit out of that. And let's do AWS STS assume role. And that'll be role ARN and you can paste in uh, the role ARN. And then the role session name, that can be anything. Example. And ah, uh, yeah, so I forgot to export AWS uh, profile equals OS so that it uses that user we created. And the session name can be anything, so let's call it example. All right, and there we go. We were able to assume the role. Now that we've got that ready to go, let's go back to the OpenSearch cluster and see if it's ready. Or I should say back to the OpenSearch domain. There's no cluster management per se to do here. AWS takes care of that for us. And as you can see, it is active and healthy. So let's click on this dashboard URL. Since we made it public, it just comes right up. All we need is a username and password. Of course, not recommended for production, but good for wrapping your mind around it. And let's just click out of all of these windows and let's go to the hamburger menu in the top left. And let's go to the 
security plugin. Okay, so here we are in the security API and let's see, here's a script AWS provides for giving an example of how you can do HTTPS requests using an, using IAM credentials with Boto3 to do what? To create an index called movies, put a document in it and get that document back. So let's make sure we have these installed before we test this role using this Python script. So I'm just gonna paste in those installation commands and I believe I've already installed all of these. So that's just gonna go right through. Uh, I'll, I've already created a directory here called OS Open Search with IAM. And in that directory, let's create a new file called python test.py and we're going to open up that new file in code, uh, Visual Studio Code. And in this new file, I'm just going to paste in the code from that documentation. Let's update the host here with the information about our open search domain. And we can grab that here in the AWS console under domain endpoint. And we'll just paste that right in here. Although the example here says to take out the HTTPS colon slash slash. So I'll do that and save. And then let's put in the region we're using. Here's an interesting thing. You know, a lot of you might be saying, I don't use access keys and secret keys. I use best practice of using IAM rules instead. And actually for that, uh, there is an answer. There is refreshable credentials. Let's see what that's called exactly. So I've opened up the AWS 4 auth library here. And if you search for, ah, there we go, refreshable credentials. Here's the syntax for that. So I will just paste this line into VS code. And that is going to look like that. Okay, so I'm going to paste that in here. And let's just take the refreshable credentials part of that and replace it here. And let's go back to our terminal. And let's just assume the role again. And let's actually uh, put this, uh, these values here into our credentials file. And when you put that into your credentials file, that's going to look like this, AWS access key ID, AWS secret access key, AWS session token, and you can give that profile a name. We'll use that profile when we make a, we're going to set that as the AWS profile in the terminal before we run the Python script. And I'm just doing this to demonstrate that we can do this with an IAM role as opposed to an IAM user. And in production, you're going to be calling this from like an EC2 instance or a Lambda uh, where it's doing the whole assume role for you. But I'm just trying to be as explicit as possible here. So you can see all of the steps going on. Uh, so back to the terminal here, let's export AWS profile equals temp OS because that's the profile we just put the uh, temporary credentials from the assume role into. Okay, um, and let's do an ls here. The example I just made was python-example.py. So back to the terminal here, let's just see what we've got here. Okay, so here's the file we created, the python test.py. Let's try to run it. Let's see what happens. Ah, yeah, there's a positional argument. So we should put the positional arguments afterwards. Um, no, other way around. The positional arguments go first. Let's try this. Key value pairs come afterwards. Save. And let's, let's try running that again. I'm just going to make them all key value pairs so that I don't have to get the positions right. Less error prone that way. So region equals region, service equals service, because we set those as variables earlier. Okay, now it should hopefully not complain about the positions. 
So let's go back to the terminal. I'm doing screen sharing switching here back and forth. All right, now that we made those all key value pairs, <clears throat> this should hopefully work. Okay, and as you can see, we can now connect to the open search domain. So that's good news. Uh, we're now just getting this authorization exception. And that's because AWS IAM handles the authentication. It can verify the identity, but OpenSearch handles the authorization. So it knows that we are this identity, this OpenSearch demo role we created. However, there are no permissions mapped to that. And I assume it says backend role here because backend role is the term used within OpenSearch for external identities. And we haven't, we have not assigned our external identity any open search roles. Open search roles are different from IAM roles. Again, they provide the actual authorization, the open search roles. Okay, so let's create an open search role. Um, let's call it movies admin. I say admin because we're gonna give it unlimited permissions for which index? The movies index. And then we're going to create. And now let's map the user. Let's manage the mapping. If we had an internal user database, we could specify users here to map to this unlimited movies index permission and whatever other permissions we map to the movies admin role. But uh, we, have a, we have an external identity, the AWS IAM role that we created. So we're gonna map that AWS IAM role to this open search backend role. So let's um, copy paste our ARN into here and map. Now let's see what happens when we run this again. Okay, very cool, it's a different error. Um, before we had no permissions for indices data write index and user. Now we have no permissions for data write bulk. So before we had data write index, now it's data write bulk. So something is happening here. So let's try uh, copying this and going back to permissions and let's try adding that. So let's edit the role and let's see, let's paste that in. Index permissions, index write bulk and update. Now let's run this again. Okay, we're still getting that. So does that mean we need to put that at the cluster level? Let's just try that. Debugging our way into getting this to work here. Index write bulk. I guess that's not ideal because we do want to limit it to movies. Um, but let's just try that. And that worked, amazing. And uh, we just created an index called movies. We put a document into that index and we got it back. Amazing. So um, in the future, you know, we'd want to see how we can limit this perhaps with a condition. But for now, I just wanted to show you the principle of how you can map an AWS IAM role to an open search role. And the most important thing here for your wallet at this moment is to terminate this cluster when you're done experimenting, because otherwise you're going to have a higher AWS bill next month than you were expecting. So let's turn this off. Test is the no name of the domain. And bye-bye domain. So I hope this video helped you make better sense out of how AWS IAM roles can be mapped to open search roles as backend roles and how authentication can happen with AWS IAM, but then the authorization can happen within open search. Please leave a comment below if you have any follow-up questions or if you have comments about how you handled security within the open search API. And if this content was helpful, please subscribe so you can get more videos like this and give it a like. And until next time.